at the glass and how fast can you go there are some um, still things need to be uh, looked at the other thing is I would en envision depending on what you have up there is how well can you see in 500 and you would get an idea of the capability uh, of this thing to go over this top of us so this is not the logic that it can go over rated at 500 pounds. Are you, is the power coming from up there or inside no, the rover? No, the power is sh show you this idea of a, a, a minimalist type of rover that actually could be used to go into craters uh, to explore a deep and steep crater. Um, now you see the uh, rover is descending uh, from what we simulated as a uh, crater promontory. It's it's, it was sitting on a lander. If you look at the side here, there's actually this is the polar lander mock-up that we put up there. Uh, of course, it should have been a little bit propped higher, but that's the best we could have done uh, to, and keep it stable. Uh, now this uh, rover actually uh, went down over this promontory, and you can see it's going down a vertical about this is about 85 or 80 degree slope over this rock, and. It actually, if you really look at this carefully, this operates like a yo-yo, so it really doesn't need to have any surface. So right now, here it uh, loses contact with the surface, and it just free hands and lowers itself. Um, and once it hits the terrain, it will uh, gain traction again, and it will, uh, you know, drive forward, and it can also do turns in place. Now you see the blue body is actually rotating full circle. What it's doing, actually, it's unreeling that tether. Um, and we have, in this rover, we have only three motors controlling it. There's one controlling the left wheel, one controlling the right wheel, and one controlling that uh, lever arm that rotates the lever arm relative to the body. So if you look very carefully, the position of that arm relative to the position of the camera changes continuously. So now it's going down the slope, and uh, it's, it's using, you know, it's pushing that lever into the ground to gain forward traction but it also keeps the balance uh, with that uh, tether. And uh, now we stop here to actually show you how we're going to collect the sample. So what we do is we bring this lever arm and dig it into the ground and then turn in place. And that turn in place digs that lever arm, we dig the lever arm into the ground, and then the turn in place fills two sampling tubes that are on this uh, protrusion that's sticking out of the lever arm. Um, and these will collect our samples. Uh, we repeat that a few times, that digs us deeper into the ground, and we can collect that sample. Uh, so now it's pushing and it's filling one of the tubes, and then we're doing and then filling the second tube. And that's how we can collect that sample. And we can do that. Now we've explored different sampling devices, and actually we had uh, students at Caltech also look at rasping into rocks. So we both looked and looked at that. Another thing is, how do we actually automate these trajectory generations? How do we plan our paths? We need to put obstacle avoidance for sure on this thing. Um, we need to see how well it performs uh, with infrequent communication to it. So there's a lot of steps that still